Hi everyone, my name is Nicole and welcome to the Weeks Nest DIY. So in today's video, I have put together a mega Christmas compilation. This is 41 must try Dollar Tree Christmas DIYs that are high end inspired, easy and affordable to make. So I hope you enjoy this one and let's get on into it. This is definitely a binge worthy compilation. So let's get started. So for this project, I wanted something decorative, but also something that you can store cute Christmas mugs like these Santa Claus ones from Dollar Tree. Now, if you like village house decor, I did just share a really fun project, which I will link down below in the description box. So keeping with that theme, I'm using this house kind of shelf piece from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be incorporating some of these really cute gift bag signs or gift, not gift bag signs. I'm at a loss for words today, people gift tags. There we go. Um, to this, just to kind of give it more of a Christmassy look, but I love this as is. It's just a great base. So these tags are adorable. I have not ever seen these at Dollar Tree before, so I knew immediately when I picked them up that these would be perfect for a cute Christmas village house. So I'm just going to use a glue stick to attach these, and then I'm using some of these wired garland ties. These are from Hobby Lobby. I just doubled them up to get a little bit thicker of a little Christmas wreath, and I am going to size it so that it covers the wreath that is originally on this piece, and we are gonna hot glue that right on top. Also adding this cute little wood sticker to act as a centerpiece for our wreath. So since this is gift tags that I'm using for this little Christmas village house, let me know in the comments, do you like go all out with your Christmas wrapping and use all fancy tags and bows? Or are you just kind of more like a quick wrap or slap it in a <laughs> gift bag type person? It really depends the mood. I can really be extra and I can really be simple. So it really <laughs> depends on the day that I am wrapping gifts. So I saw these gift tags though and I definitely would like to incorporate them in my gift giving this year. So we'll see how it goes. So I'm just gonna add this Christmas tree little tag to the side here and again, just a glue stick and it goes right on. I think this looks super cute. Now I felt like this house was missing something so I did decide to add a little bit of a pop to the roof. So taking two craft sticks, I'm just gonna paint these in some black Waverly ink chalk paint and then once that dries, I'm just gonna hot glue them right on just to add a little bit more of a pop and finished look to this roof. So now to add some height, I'm gonna take an MDF long sign from Dollar Tree that was cut in half. Now I did an entire hack video dedicated to projects with these signs, so if you're interested, that will be down in the description box below. But all I did was I painted these black and then I'm gonna hot glue them to the bottom. And I'm also going to add a little Dollar Tree wood square just to reinforce them in the back so that everything stays in place. And I'm gonna do this for either side. And this is just gonna add a little bit of height to this. Um, I was not originally gonna do this and then I got these adorable little mugs and I thought that it would be great to store them and display them underneath this on my coffee bar. It's still tall and kind of streamlined, but it's a decorative way to kind of keep those little coffee mugs from the Dollar Tree in one spot. I did decide to just paint that front of this so that it looks all cohesive with the little black legs that we put on this. And that is it for this. I think this is an adorable use of Dollar Tree gift tags. Let me know what you think. And this is a great way to store those cute Christmas mugs that you can find at the Dollar Tree or other stores. And I also put it on a Buffalo check heart plate that I also picked up from the Dollar Tree. So let me know what you think about this one. And now we're going to be making these really easy modern Christmas tree displays using the triangle wood cutouts from our MDF cutouts from Dollar Tree triangle pieces and we are going to make some modern trees now you want to take out the backing of these and make sure you do that carefully so you don't 
like rip anything and you're going to get a lot of paper that's kind of on the borders of these so a Dollar Tree sanding sponge will take that right away. So I go ahead and sand that for all three of these triangle pieces. using the backings of these and as you could tell the scrapbook paper that was on it or whatever paper was kind of ripped so we're just going to flip that over sand down anything that's coming off of the edges and we're going to use the back as the base to add our scrapbook paper but first I wanted these to have a modern look so I'm taking Waverly's chalk paint and ink I'm going to paint the border of these triangles as well as the frame on the front side you don't have to paint the bottom unless you want to but it will be covered so that is why I did not do that and make sure that you don't get inside the wood so that it has a nice contrast against the black paint. Recently was super inspired by these very simple modern pieces of scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to do two in that plaid and then one in that very simple black and white Christmas tree. And then really easy, I'm just going to use a glue stick and apply these before we start constructing our trees. Now, full disclosure, I had a completely different idea in mind for these. I wanted a really tall three stacked tree, but that did not work so I'm going to show you how instead I decided to style these um, of course a little bit of hot glue to reapply those triangle backings just make sure everything lines up um, I like I said wanted to have three but it was too heavy so real life crafting sometimes things don't go to plan but I was still able to salvage this project tree is going to be a two stack. I wanted it to be three, but it was too heavy. So a little bit of hot glue, and then we're going to stack this simple black and white tree scrapbook paper on top. Now this is how I wanted it originally. I actually went ahead and hot glued and I wasn't going to show this, but I figure, Hey, like crafting mishaps happen. So it toppled over. So now I'm going to take one of these after square scrap wood pieces. Anyone else like super happy crafter square has a ton of wood pieces now. It's like one of my favorite things from the Dollar Tree, but I'm going to use this and hot glue this to the back. And this is just going to help balance out these stacked trees and allow them to stand up. So I'm going to style them with two stacked like this and then one on its own. Now I could not get the hot glue marks off so I just painted that with some black paint over it but if you recreate this project just know not to stack the three and you won't have to do that extra step but I love how these turned out. I really feel like the scrapbook paper elevates these makes them look a lot more store-bought and modern and I really like how these turned out. We're going to take this tray, which is found in like the party supply section at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a coat of this Rust-Oleum Current Red Matte Spray Paint. This is one of my favorite spray paints, especially for the Christmas season since it's red. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a good coat. You can also paint this with regular paint, but isn't spray paint just so much easier and then once that's dry I'm going to add the printable as always I provide the links for the printables down in my description box below but for some reason they seem to not work for many people so don't hesitate you can always email me have the email title say printable let me know what you want and I will send you that PDF directly I make the printables for you so that you can get some inspiration and craft along with me so I will always be able to send you them if you cannot download it. Once that printable is on, I'm going to take some white chalk paint and we're just going to dry brush the really pretty edges of this plate. To me, as the plate is on its own, it kind of looks like a little, I don't know, gaudy. But when you add some paint to it, highlight the edges, I think it really does give it a really pretty, simple, high-end look. So that's all there is for this project. Again, all the original tutorials to what inspired these Christmas projects from my fall projects will be in the description box below. So make sure you check this out and let me know what you think. I think this came out really cute and it was seriously such an easy project.
DIY is a large sign hack. So I found this huge gift bag at Dollar Tree and I knew instantly that I wanted to turn it into a sign. So I'm gonna go ahead, take some large paint stir sticks. You get these for like a dollar or two at Home Depot. And I'm just gonna measure where I need to cut them. Now I decided to cut away the red stripe around the uh, green part of the bag, which will be our sign. Um, so that is just how I measured the length of the wood stick. So just keep that in mind. And then of course, pretty self-explanatory. I just took my scissors and went ahead and cut this out. I was so excited to find a bag like this that was large and definitely had something that I would just want in a sign. It's a really quick and easy way to make a piece of wall decor. Now, lots of options for those paint stir sticks. I decided to paint them in black, but you can of course leave them as is or stain them. That is up to you. Packing, I am just using like a project board from the Dollar Tree. You can also just use some cardboard from a leftover box if you've one big enough or Dollar Tree foam board would work as well. Now I do suggest either using Mod Podge or spray adhesive for this. You could use a glue stick, but I feel like you're going to be there for a um, hot minute <laughs> using the glue stick. I say that because I started out with the glue stick forgetting how big this project was and I felt like I was gluing for an hour and I made it only an eighth of the way from what the sign will be. So thin layer of Mod Podge. Now I will say I still got, a, not bubbles, but bumps. I think it's because of the cardboard. So I think what would eliminate that is if you use foam board. You're not gonna get all those grooves like you have on a cardboard box. So just keep that in mind. Um, I actually wanted foam board, but my Dollar Tree didn't have it the day that I went and they always have foam board, but it's always the time that you want something specific, they don't have it. So I am just going to hot glue those paint stir sticks to act as our border for this, and that is it. I think this is super cute. It's definitely like a design you would see like at Kirkland's or something like that, and it cost like a dollar or two to make and was a five minute project. Next, we're gonna make this really easy angel tassel ornament. So for the hair of the angel, we're gonna take some of this yarn. This is from Dollar Tree, and we're gonna wrap this. I wrapped it about 30 times for the hair. Now we're just gonna gather this once we cut it on this board, um, just to kind of be the top of the hair. And I was inspired by a Pinterest pin, which I will link down below, that inspired me to make this tassel angel. I thought it was so cute, so I had to make my own. Now taking a, another strand, you're just gonna tie a, I think I did a triple knot, to make sure all the hair is in place. And then we're gonna make another tassel that's going to be the body of the angel. I set that hair aside, I'm going to do the same thing, wrapping 40 times this time, just so the angel's body um, and dress will kind of flare out a little bit more. And then I'm gonna cinch this tassel on the top just like we did the hair. The only difference is now, since this is gonna be a full tassel, we're gonna cut another piece of yarn and that is going to act as the top of the angel's or the middle of the angel's dress. And of course, you're just going to want to take the bottoms of the tassel and trim everything so that it is even. So once you have that, you're going to add a large wood bead to act as the angel's face. And then you're gonna wanna add a few knots to the top just to make sure that the wood bead stays in place. And then when I tied these knots, you saw me make a little bit of a loop. You wanna leave that loop there because that is what's going to allow you to actually hang this on the Christmas tree. And it's kind of like a two for one. You have the wood bead secure and then you have a little hanger as well to hang this as your ornament. Taking some macrame cord, I just cut two pieces 
and kind of made little loops to act as the angel's wings. And then I'm gonna take a lot of hot glue to the back, making sure that they stay in place. You wanna add a lot of hot glue, especially using macrame cord, because it's more structured and heavy. It's gonna weigh down and kind of fall off if you don't add enough glue. So I just took my time with this. I added a whole bunch of glue, and then the angel's wings were set. Now we are going to attach the hair. So a little bit of hot glue at the top to attach the yarn hair. And they wanna make sure you place it so it kinda of goes behind the wings and you can see that. And then I cut another piece of macrame cord to kind of to act as like a headband halo. And then we're gonna wrap that around and add some hot glue to the front as well as the back to secure in place. this was inspired by Pinterest and I will link that original inspiration um, post down below but I love how this turned out I always love adding an angel or two to my Christmas tree so this is a really easy way to do that so let me know what you think love making menu chalkboards. So I'm going to make this Christmas one inspired from this pumpkin one that I did not too long ago. So I found this beautiful green plaid scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby and I knew I had to incorporate this. To me it gives it a little bit of a modern look but also a little bit more um, traditional. And then I'm going to use a wood cutout Christmas tree that I had from last year. As you can tell I ripped it apart from another project. Um, that's just what I do to save some money and reuse things. Now, I also like doing this because if I'm in the mood to start crafting for Christmas and Dollar Tree, which mine is really, really late lately on getting the seasonal things, I do have some items that I can repurpose because I bet you anything they're going to have this Christmas tree cut out since they have it pretty much every year. So super easy. You're just going to trace, cut, and then glue that scrapbook paper right over top the scrapbook paper that is on here. I did rip off a little bit on the top because it was kind of falling off, but everything else was really... It held up <laughs> from the year in storage, so that was an easy fix. One of these wood chalkboards from the Dollar Tree. I like the ones that have the stand. I've used them a lot on my channel. I'm going to take some red paint. This is from Arteza, and I'm just going to make this a little bit more vibrant and festive by painting the frame as well as the base. This is again another item that Dollar Tree has year round. I really like incorporating year round pieces into my seasonal crafting because I know it can get frustrating when Dollar Trees kind of come out with things at all different times. I want to be able to create things that are subtle and that are easily accessible. So I definitely will be including throughout my seasonal crafting pieces that can be found year round, whether it's from the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby, things like that so that you can craft along. Now this was new to my Dollar Tree. It's this cute like little pom-pom trim garland. Um, this was in the crafter square section. No, just kidding, I lied. It was with the very small seasonal section that they have at my Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna trim two pieces. I just think this looks so pretty against the scrapbook paper. Let me know what you think. And then I'm gonna hot glue that on. But before we do that, I just wanna see where I need to put this little trim. So I'm gonna hot glue this, not the scrapbook paper. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the chalkboard, there we go to the tree and what I love about those chalkboards with the stand is that whatever you're attaching it to is able to kind of stand upright so you don't have to worry about putting anything on it to add it to a wall. You can just put it on a tabletop nice and easy. So that gives me kind of a, um, lets me eyeball where I need to add the trim. A little bit of hot glue for that and I just think this really makes the tree look so much more fun and festive did make a printable that I put on sticker paper. 
I love using sticker paper because it's just so easy. And then the only thing you have to do different in your printer is just put the settings to photo paper so it's a little bit thicker. And let me know how you like how this turned out. I absolutely love it. And I cannot wait to use this in my kitchen for Christmas. This is another Pinterest inspired ornament. I found on Pinterest this Bible page printable and I'm going to pair this with one of these cutouts from Hobby Lobby. They come in a four pack in the Christmas craft section. So all I'm going to do is first trim away the excess paper and I am going to trim or not trim, trace this on to the ornament and then we're going to attach it super easy. Now I did leave a little bit on the top so you can see a little bit of that really pretty kind of whitewashed wood background and but if you don't want that you can also just trace this so that if you're using this ornament base everything is covered. Um, I did print this out on cardstock. I do prefer doing that. I just feel like it's more sturdy and it also doesn't show any bubbles when you attach it whether you use Mod Podge or glue. So like I said I trim that top piece you could see a little bit of that whitewash wood and then once we glue this on I'm going to go ahead and add a bow just to finish it off and that is it for this really simple and beautiful ornament. I saw this on Pinterest and I just had to make one for my tree so I will link that Pinterest inspiration post down below and then where I got that printable. like Christmas, Advent, or Cubby piece. This was inspired by this World Market piece and I wanted to do my own spin on it. So for this project, I'm gonna use this beautiful plaid scrapbook paper. So you're gonna need 12 of these little boxes from the Dollar Tree Crafter Square section. You could totally use like the full 24 or 25 you put in like an actual Advent. But those are kind of hard to find and kind of get expensive. So 12 for like the 12 days of Christmas Advent cubby type deal, I think works just fine. So if you are not new to using these little cubby drawer pieces from the Dollar Tree, then you may not know that they're all not created equal. So what I did was the ones that I took out the little drawer piece to, I just labeled and numbered them. That way when I put this back together, everything shuts. I have used these in the past before and when I don't do this I find that like they just don't go into the cubby properly so that's why I did that. And now what I'm going to do is for the little drawer fronts or what will be the drawer fronts I'm going to trace with scrapbook paper label those also so everything fits on nice and then I will cut those out. So once everything is cut out, I suggest using a Mod Podge or a spray adhesive to put the scrapbook paper on what will be the little drawer front. You could use a glue stick, but you're going to want this to actually adhere nice. And then when you put the little knob on, you don't want anything to come up when you pull. So that's why I suggest Mod Podge or spray adhesive. The Mod Podge that I'm using is just the matte Mod Podge and I don't know, I kind of like it again. I just a very thin layer of it and I didn't get any bubbles. So that was a plus for me. So I did that to all 12 of the drawers, put the scrap paper, scrapbook paper, there we go, on and let that set. Now this is what you have. You want everything to set before you go in with a sanding sponge like I'm doing here. The reason being is you just want everything to be really flush against the wood so that way when you put this together you don't have any scrapbook paper that's kind of raising up or making it difficult to shut the little drawer piece. And can I say drawer piece or cubby any more times in this video? I don't know. <laughs> The Dollar Tree sanding sponge I feel like is such an underrated awesome crafting tool or just thing to have. Let me know down below in the comments if you agree or what is like a must have crafting item from the Dollar Tree that you just always have to have. For me, 
it's the sanding sponge. Now, since we are using six of these wood cubby pieces, we are going to do six on the top, six on the bottom, and just connect them with some hot glue. On these adorable little snowmen wood shapes and I thought these would be awesome for little pole or handles for our individual cubbies. So a little bit of hot glue, just center these into each of the 12 cubbies that we have. And you could use super glue if you want, but you'll see when I style this that the hot glue worked just fine. I do use Sherbonder hot glue and I use the high temp, so it has a really good hold and I'm able to shut and open the drawers to this and I didn't need to use any super glue, which I just don't like the smell of super glue, so when I don't have to use it, it's a win. Now I had picked up this scrap kind of, well not scrap wood because it wasn't, you know what I mean. I picked up this wood sign unfinished at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby and it actually was almost the perfect length of what the length of the cubbies are. So this is gonna kind of be the base of our advent piece. And for the top, I just cut to size this really pretty pom-pom crafter square, um, garland I guess you call it um this is from Dollar Tree I think this is new this year I've seen it in red and green also but I only got my hands on the white and I absolutely love it now here is a printable that I made it's a little Merry Christmas um banner I know for whatever reason my printable links never seem to work lately I apologize as you know I always have it in my description box I make these for you guys to craft along with. So if you email me, it may take me like a day or two to get back to you, but I always make sure I check my email and I send the PDFs. Just make sure in the email description or title you write printable. Let me know what video you want the printable to and I will send that to you. I love how this turned out. It's a little bit more of like a fresh modern take on an advent. You can even use this at like a coffee or a hot cocoa bar. Um, you can add a number to this for like a countdown. Lots of different options. I really wanted to keep this very minimal and simple. And I love how substantial this piece looks using Dollar Tree items. Let me know what you think of this project down below. Is this large red door piece? And I love how this turned out, and it's so simple to make. So, for this, you're going to need three of these MDF signs as is. They're about 18 inches ish each. And then this printable that I provided down below. Now, for this, you're just going to want to add a little bit of hot glue to attach, not too much so that it doesn't seep through. And then, while the hot glue is still fresh, you want to make sure that you move it so that everything is nice nice and even. And we are going to reinforce this on the back, but make sure you don't add too much hot glue because again, it will show. If I do not sound like myself, it's because I am sick. So just bear with me because my voice I know sounds a little bit off or maybe it doesn't, but to me it definitely does. So once these are glued, we're gonna flip this over and reinforce it. To do that, we're gonna take some popsicle sticks or craft sticks and some hot glue and just add them throughout so that this piece is nice and sturdy. I know a lot of you like these videos where you take one item and show it a lot of different ways. So let me know down in the comments what are some items you would like to see one item a whole bunch of different ways. Let me know because I love doing these videos. So I wanted this to be a nice, beautiful, traditional, bright red, except as you can tell from that paint bottle in the right corner, I really did not have much red and my favorite Rust-Oleum spray paint I'm low on. So what I did was I did one coat just to cover a little bit of the wording and then I had just enough of this spray paint to cover it, which I was super happy about. So I did print out this window printable on sticker paper just to make my life easier. I get my sticker paper from Hobby Lobby. Um, also, the Staples brand is good as well. And then I'm going to take two of these, um, what are they, like garland wire stem things? It's obviously not the word, but they come from Hobby Lobby. You get like 10 or 20 for two bucks. Dollar Tree does have something similar, but I think the Hobby Lobby ones you get more for the money. 
and they're just better quality. So I put two of them together to make a little bit of a thicker wreath and then I'm just going to shape that. By no means is it a perfect wreath, but it will do. And then a little bit of hot glue to attach this and then we're gonna add that buffalo check bow, just keeping it really simple, traditional colors for Christmas. Um, to the top and it also kind of hides where I looped those two together and this came from a six pack from the Dollar Tree. And then we have this wood bead and a little bit of hot glue and this is going to act as our doorknob and that is it for this really pretty piece. You can also add some wording to you want if you want, not to you want, if you want on the bottom. I kept it simple and I love how bright and traditional Christmas E this is. There we go. Inspired project is this stocking accent piece. So on the Kirkland's website, they have a whole bunch of stockings that have these cute pom pom accents. So I recently picked up this stocking from Dollar General, and I'm going to add some Dollar Tree yarn and this cute pom pom contraption, whatever you want to call it. I will link this down below in the description box. It's from Amazon, and I'm going to make a pom pom. Now, if you go on Pinterest, there's a whole bunch of ways you can make pom poms, but this was really inexpensive and honestly I've used this a ton and this little piece that comes in three different sizes is so easy. You just twist it around the two pieces and then you'll see me close it, trim it and secure and then you get a perfect pom pom. Now when you use this, I am making this faster since I'm just wrapping it around. The more that you wrap this around, the thicker the pom pom will be. So just keep that in mind. So once everything's wrapped, you're gonna trim it. Then you are gonna trim both sides of the yarn. And then you're gonna add a piece to the center that you're gonna secure your pom pom and then you go back and trim. So I'm gonna cut another piece of yarn. I'm gonna tie a double knot just to secure all those strands nice and tight. And then once I remove this, I'm just going to trim my pom pom. And for this stocking accent, I'm gonna make two. So like I I said the more you wrap around the denser a pom-pom you will have but this is super easy so I made two of these to go on to our stocking so once they're trimmed we're just going to attach them to the stocking again from Dollar General don't forget about them if you have one near you they have really cute stuff and these stockings were only a dollar so I made a tassel I've made plenty of tassels on my channel I can link a tassel tutorial down below but I'm going to first tie on that tassel to the little hanging loop and then I'm going to hot glue the pom-poms on and this is such a quick and easy way to take a plain stocking, give it some character, and give it a more store-bought look. Here is how our Kirkland's inspired look turned out. This only cost me less than two dollars to make and I have four stockings that I have a really nice fun accent to add to it. XDIY is a really easy way to use greeting cards. So the Dollar Tree has a ton of Christmas cards. I found this Barbie one, which I know my oldest would love. So all I did was just find a base. This is a Dollar Tree seasonal sign. I think it looks really cute as a larger ornament since it already has the wood beads on it to hang. So I just trimmed this to size, added some glue, and you have a really fun and quick ornament. is a stocking holder. I picked up four of these really pretty hooks from Dollar Tree and I'm using some scrap wood. Now you can also use some long seasonal Dollar Tree signs, really whatever you have, but I had some scrap wood. So I'm first going to reinforce this with some wood sticks before I flip this over and screw in the hooks. Now I also wanted to make this a piece that I can use year round besides using this for Christmas. So I'm going to show you a little hack that you 
you are able to do that so you can have this also as a functional piece in your home year round. So I was so excited to find these hooks at Dollar Tree. They were in like the decor section and I picked up four since I need four stockings to hang and they already come with the screws so you're able to just open them up and apply them to where you need. Now I decided to lightly dry brush this scrap wood just to add a little more warmth. And then I am gonna add my sawtooth hangers on the back so that I'm able to put this on my wall. You can also use command strips. You just definitely want to get something that is going to hold up the weight of the stockings. So like I said, these hooks from Dollar Tree already come with everything you need to hang them. And I was able to just screw them right into the wood. I kind of eyeballed the placing and I did put that piece of wood up on top just so that I had everything all lined up and that each of the hooks were able to be in a straight line. So to bring in the Christmas factor, I'm going to use this wood oval piece from the Dollar Tree crafter square section as my paint does not want to squirt out. And I'm going to paint this in red and then I'm going to go in and do some dry brushing just so I can get a little bit of a festive pop on this otherwise kind of neutral piece. Now, of course, as always, anything that I show you is just for inspiration. So you can recreate it if you want using whatever colors or whatever you want. So I'm going to dry brush this a little bit and then I am going to add a printable to this, which will be in the description box below. And if it does not download for you, my email is also in the description box. So you can always email me, just say printable in the title of the email. Let me know what printable you want and I will send you that PDF directly. Now, my idea for this was I wanted to add the printable and I wanted to add something that I can have this on for Christmas and then take it off when it's not. So I am going to use these fastener dots from Dollar Tree. So first you're going to apply the printable to the piece of wood and I felt that this oval piece just fit perfectly on top. And then I'm going to add some of the fastener dots and what this is going to do is allow me to put this sign on when I want it to be a stocking holder. And then the nice thing with the fastener dots is, is that they do have an adhesive backing. So they are gonna stay on, but then when you wanna take this off and take off those dots, you're able to do that. And they come off kind of like a command strip would, and they do not ruin the surface that you're putting them on. So just for stability, I did put three on here, and this is how it turned out. I absolutely love the simplicity of this. Again, I love that this is a piece that I can use functionally in my Christmas decor and then again during the after seasons or after the holidays. There we go. And these stockings I picked up for $1 each at Dollar General. I absolutely love them and I love how this turned out. So let me know in the comments, how do you hang your stockings for Christmas? Next up, we are going to make this really pretty kind of vignette. I will say 100% off the bat, this was inspired by my good friend, Kristen K. I'm going to link her video down below, but she made this and I absolutely loved it. So I asked her for permission <laughs> to recreate it. So what I did for this was cut, let me see, three of these down to about nine inches and then taking four, we're going to hot glue the same way that we did for that first door project. And then again, reinforcing with some hot glue and craft sticks before we go ahead and start painting this. And then once they are all attached, I'm going to take some white chalk paint and give this two good coats. Also making sure that I paint the sides of this so that everything looks nice and finished. And then for that fifth piece, I'm gonna take this Ink Waverly chalk paint, paint that in black, again, painting the top and all four sides so that you don't see that MDF board poking through.
I know with the printables I provide, a lot of people have issues downloading them. So as always, you can email me. My email is always in the description box of every video. Let me know in the title that is a printable that you want. And then of course, just let me know which project you want the printable for and I will send you the PDF directly. So for this, I just cut out my printable using a glue stick. I did print this out on cardstock. I just find that it doesn't get any bubbles that way. Um, so once I had that on, I felt like this was missing something. So I'm going to go back and take that green wired kind of garland and make a little swag on the top of this. I purposely left a little bit of room to do that. So what's great about this is that it is wired so you can easily kind of mold it and move it to where you want. So I just played around with this a little bit and then once I had it to be kind of the swag shape that I want, I did use some hot glue just to have everything go in place and I feel like it just adds a nice traditional Christmas look to this. I definitely was going for a mix of neutral and traditional for this video. Our garland is on a little bit of hot glue to add this to our stand and then since this is decently heavy I just wanted to make sure that everything stayed in place so taking one of these scrap wood pieces from Dollar Tree this fit perfectly with some hot glue in the back I put that down to secure it so everything stays in place and then I felt like this was missing something so I did add one of these bows. I trimmed the ends of it a little bit. I was going to, what is it called, dovetail them but I just cannot dovetail a bow end to save my life. So that is why I did not do that and a little bit of hot glue and there you go. I added one of the Dollar Tree chairs that are in the toy section in a two pack. I spray painted that with some black spray paint and I just absolutely love this. As many of you know, my grandma was someone that I was so close with and inspired me to craft. I miss her so much. So it means so much to me to have a project like this in my home, um, especially during the holiday season. next up we're using that same pom-pom garland type strand string whatever you want to call it and making a really easy garland this was inspired by the world market star kind of wood garland that they had dollar tree does not have the stars but they have a lot of these snowflakes so that's close enough so that is what I grab for this project. I'm going to use one of the sets of four and I'm just going to go ahead and take off the little hangers that come with this. Now you can paint these, you can stain these. I like the unfinished wood look. It's also very close to what the world market um, look was. So I'm just going to cut a piece, kind of eyeballed it, this pom-pom strand. Is that what we're calling this? Pom-pom strand, I guess. I don't know. And I just took some Dollar Tree twine and strung it through the top holes of the snowflakes and then really easy, I just kind of spaced out by eye um, where I wanted to put these. Now I did count them as you see me awkwardly pointing but it was kind of an odd number since I just cut the pom-pom piece and I didn't count but I just double knotted them, kind of made sure they were as evenly spaced out as possible and that was it for this project. Really easy and if you cannot find this pom-pom garland strand. Um, you can use yarn, twine, jute, lots of different options. Of course, go back and make sure that you trim where you knotted. And that is it for this really easy world market inspired snowflake garland. fun and easy treats for Santa board. So for this, we're going to use four of these MDF sides from Dollar Signs, not sides, from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do the same thing with the hot glue, making sure that I don't add too much. And then I'm going to reinforce this again, like we've been doing for our projects in this video. You want to add for this, since it is a larger piece, I did go ahead and kind of stagger and add a little bit more hot glue and craft sticks than I did for the other projects. I just really wanted to make sure that this held in place. So that's why I did that all throughout the back of this piece. Cover up the writing, I did use three coats of 
my white Adirondack chalk paint from Folk Art. Of course, you could do this any color you want. I really wanted this to be a bright red with white vinyl, um, but I didn't have any more red paint, so that's why I went with the white. But honestly, I would have done this a little bit brighter, um, but I'm just using what I have since I cannot go out to the store right now, so that is what I went with. link the Etsy shop down below that I purchased this SVG file from. But the great news is that she also provides this as a PNG file. So that's like what I provide to you guys with my free printables. So if you do not have a cutting machine and you want something similar to this, you can purchase from the Etsy shop that I did and just print out the PNG file. So I did not group this all together when I put this in my Cricut Design Space. I purposely left it separate so I can kind of figure out where I wanted everything since this is a little bit of a odd shape um, and I wanted to add handles to this. So that's why you see all the decals separate and then I just kind of played around with the placement of everything. Once all the decals are added, this is how it turned out. I absolutely love this. I added some handles that I've had in my craft room from Hobby Lobby for a while. And I know my girls are going to get a kick out of using this and leaving treats for Santa and his reindeer. And next up is a modern, simple winter or Christmas decor sign. This is inspired by this sign from World Market. Now, I did my own version of it. I didn't exactly like the original, so I just wanted to make it more simple and easy. Taking one of these black 8x10 stretch canvases from Dollar Tree, which I am so excited they have black canvases now, um, definitely lends to a really nice, clean, modern look. I went ahead and bordered this with some scrap shims that I had, and I cut to size. Now, if you download this printable, or I'm probably going to have to send the PDF because, again, the links just never work. I need to figure that out. Um, the printable is like a green, more like a evergreen-looking tree. Um, I have a color printer, and it just decides to print color when it wants to. Not quite sure what that is exactly. So this looks a little more like gray, black, and white, which I don't mind because the white snow kind of breaks it up. I did print this out on sticker paper, and that was it for this. So if you do want to recreate this in black and white, I would have that setting in your printer. Or if you want the nice green that it's supposed to be, and your color printer works unlike mine, it should work for you really easy. This Christmas yeah. hack would make a great decor piece or a gift. So I was excited to see these ornament wood thicker pieces from Dollar Tree. So these would make great coasters. They also would make great ornaments. They are pretty rough, so you do need to kind of sand the edges down. And once I did that, I decided to add some scrapbook paper. Lots of options with this though. You can stain these, you can paint them, um, leave them as is, but I'm really excited to see for like really good quality wood pieces at the Dollar Tree. Like it's, it's making me excited to go there again. I feel like sometimes Dollar Tree can kind of have like the same old stuff, especially for the holidays, but seeing pieces like this excites me. So I'm going to use that same scrapbook paper we did for the trees. Now these have little grooves, so it did take me some time to trace these. You want to make sure that you're tracing in the inner groove that you are going to apply the scrapbook, scrapbook, scrapbook paper too. There we go. Um, just to make sure that they stick there. You are gonna have to sand down the scrapbook paper, but just take your time making sure you're in that kind of inner groove. Now, I'm not gonna cover the very top of the ornament with um, scrapbook paper, so I took some black chalk paint and just went ahead and painted the tops. This does not need to be pretty. The bottom is going to be covered anyway by the scrapbook paper. This is just basically something for the very top of that wood ornament. To apply the scrapbook paper, I suggest either using Mod Podge or spray adhesive. Um, I guess I'm back on with Mod Podge. I've been using it a lot more lately, and honestly, I have not had any issues. So maybe I've finally perfected how to paint it on a thin layer and just kind of let it get tacky before adding the scrapbook paper. Who knows? But 
this or spray adhesive works fine. I would not use a glue stick. It's just not going to be sturdy. Now I did not show it, but after this set and I sanded, which I did show the scrapbook paper that kind of came out, you are going to want to put a layer of Mod Podge over top just so that when you actually use these as coasters, they won't get like a watermark and they will be protected. Um, yeah, so just heads up on that. But that's it for these. I think these would make a really cute gift. I did add some pom-pom trim to this Dollar Tree wood crate to keep them in and I love how this turned out. Super cute and easy Santa stop here sign. So this is the printable that I provided for this project and I'm gonna use this hexagon piece from the Dollar Tree. Now I am gonna say that I printed this out as a hexagon, but I didn't think of the exact dimensions of this hexagon piece from Dollar Tree. So you are gonna see a little bit of the wood, just a heads up, and yes, as you can see here, the stripes go outside of the hexagon. Um, you're just gonna trace, or not trace, cut the hexagon shape, if I can say that any more times, um, out and you won't see that excess there. So I just attach this to the wood piece and then we're gonna make a little stand for it. I have two of these small candle holders from Hobby Lobby. I took them from one project I did recently or a couple months ago. Um, and I am just going to hot glue them together and this is gonna act as a stand for our hexagon wood piece. And then we're gonna hot glue the bottom of that and add it and then we're gonna add a tumbling tower block to the back of that just to make sure that this stands up since this does have some weight to it. And once you have that all set, this is your sign. It's small enough that honestly, it would go really cute on a tiered tray. Maybe if you just wanna do one of the candlesticks in the bottom, but this is a really quick and easy idea for those wood hexagon pieces. Next, we're gonna take some of those Dollar Tree triangles and make a modern tree display. So for this project, you're gonna need three of these triangle pieces. And for the middle one, we're gonna flip it upside down and that is how it's going to lay in our project. Now I did use these in a recent project, which I will have linked down below for another modern Christmas tree look. I'm using that same scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby for this, and we are going to apply that to the inserts of the three signs. Now I will say these signs are not all created equal. Some of them pop out really easy and most of them don't. So you're gonna need a little bit of elbow grease there. And then to smooth out the scrapbook paper or whatever paper was there in the backing, I just used my Dollar Tree sanding sponge. Now for this, since one of the triangles is gonna be upside down, I was able to stack them like this so that that tree design that I'm using is upright. So keep that in mind if you are just doing this on a regular tree, you don't I'm not a regular tree. You know what I mean? If you're not making a display, you don't want to trace it upside down because then when you go to apply it, the trees will be upside down. There we go. <laughs> Once all the scrapbook paper is applied, it is time to now hot glue the frames of the triangles back on to the backings. So you wanna do this using as little hot glue as possible, making sure that it stays on the border so that none of it seeps through. Taking some of this green macrame cord, I get this from Amazon, I will have it linked down below. I'm gonna cut a piece and then have this kind of be our anchor piece and then I'm just going to make some easy tassels with this. I kind of eyeballed the length that I needed, cut enough strips to go around, or not around, down the line, across, there we go. <laughs> Words are hard once I put my kids to bed. Um, so I like to tape this down and then I go in strands of two at a time fold them in half and just loop them through with a lark's head knot and that is it. I go all the way across this anchor piece until I have all of the pieces used and then I'm going to hot glue this to the center triangle. This is totally optional. I just love adding texture 
bring him back in an oldie but goodie. <laughs> I always used to say that on my channel. I feel like I haven't said it in a while, but I like texture in my projects. Um, I love adding a pop of color against an otherwise neutral piece. So I'm just going to make sure that everything is long enough and then I'm going to finish hot gluing this piece and then attach that tassel piece to the center. Once I hot glued that, I just trimmed the pieces that came off and then I am going to add some of the Dollar Tree round stickers I have not used in a while. I had some leftover from a project. I did add a little bit of hot glue to them since the adhesive is not that strong, especially putting it over a macrame cord and it just gives it kind of a nice nail head effect. To make this a little more sturdy, I'm going to add some paint stir sticks and I just measure them to see what I need to cut to. I'm going to have one of them hanging off a little bit just so that I can add some things on top. You don't want it hanging off too much because then it's going to kind of throw off the balance of it. But once I make my markings and cuts, I'm going to paint these in black before I hot glue them. So I wanted this piece to be decorative but have the option to kind of use it as a mini tabletop or display. So adding the paint sticks does a allow me to do that. Once the paint sticks are hot glued, again, you have another opportunity to store maybe some small mugs, some bottle brush trees, little decor like that, but I feel like this is a nice statement piece and you can also make it decorative and functional. This really easy garland. Now the Kirkland's version is more of like a garland that has wording on it, some wood beads, and it's more for like a wall decor, but I'm gonna make this a garland for a tree. So I picked up one of these eight pack, or eight piece a pack, um, wood Christmas trees, and I went ahead and spray painted them outside with some of this matte Rust-Oleum spray paint. Now, I did spray both the front and the back of this just so when I actually have this on the tree that you can see both sides. Now, of course, you can make this a more exact dupe to the Kirkland's one, but for me, I prefer seeing garlands like this on my tree versus the wall, so that's why I opted for this version. Now, I did get this pom-pom garland strand from Hobby Lobby. It was $3.99 originally and 50% off. So I know they don't have the coupons, but when they do run the 50% off sales, it's definitely worth going. And all we're gonna do for this, once the paint is dry, is we're gonna use the jute hangers that come with it. First, double knot and attach them onto that pom-pom garland. I, at first, was gonna like evenly space out the trees, but I just kind of guesstimated where to put them. And once I had them on, that is when I went back and trimmed those jute hangers. But this I think is a really good um, and just easy project to make for a Christmas tree garland. Now I'm gonna style this on my smaller tree, but of course, keep in mind if you are putting this on a larger tree, you may need to make two or three of these, but for a four and a half foot tree, one was fine for like kind of the middle piece of this. So this is what it looks like without it being on the tree. And then this is what it looks like styled on this Walmart four and a half foot tree. Up, we are going to make a decorative plate. So I saw these plates on the Kirkland's website and I knew I could recreate them using one of these white plates. These are plastic from Dollar Tree and this printable. Now I did make this printable and I printed it out on some hipper, hipper, hippo water slide paper. That is a mouthful. I have an entire video on the water slide decals from Hippo, which I will link down below. But basically, you print it on this paper and then you use an acrylic matte coat, which I did already for this. You spray it three times, letting it dry 10 minutes in between. Then once it's dry, you're gonna soak it and then your decal forms from this. You wanna be very careful with this because the decal is thin. And then once you have that separated, you're gonna take some water and add it to whatever your base is for the decal and then 
just like the title of the decal says, you can water slide it on. And this is a great inexpensive alternative to a Cricut machine. And the best part is you can do whatever printable. So you can print something from online, you can design your own designs, and then you can add them onto surfaces like a vinyl decal, but it is from your computer. So I, like I said, added a generous amount of water to this and I will have an full tutorial on the water slide decals down below. And I love how this turned out. This cost me like a dollar to make. I already had the paper on hand and this is a great high-end Kirkland's Christmas dupe. dupe is some wall decor. I saw this Christmas tree sketch piece of wall decor on the Kirkland's website and I knew that I can easily recreate this with a printable. This was on sale for 20 bucks but originally 34 and ours is only going to cost us the cost of the frame. Now if you have ink obviously in printer paper on hand that's all you need for this. So for this I just went ahead and printed out this printable which will be in the description box below and if you have issues printing it I will also have my email always in the description box. You can email me ask me for the direct pdf. I just added this to a frame that I got from Walmart and that is it for this really easy Kirkland's dupe. You're going to need three or as many as you want to make of these round wood pieces from the crafter square section. You can also do two images on one, just flip it over. And like I said, I provided all the printables that I made for you in the description box below. But as always, if you ever have difficulty downloading them, you can always email me. Just put in the title of the email that it's a printable. Let me know what you want and I will always provide the PDF for you. So for this, we're gonna use these three round printables that I made. And I suggest printing these out on cardstock. I pick up my cardstock from Hobby Lobby and I know a subscriber asked recently where I get my sticker paper from Hobby Lobby. I get that in the section that has all of the vinyl for like the cutting machines, but in the scrapbook paper aisle, that's where their cardstock is, or at least in the store that I go to. So that is what I use. Now I do suggest either using spray adhesive or um, Mod Podge for this. And I found this Mod Podge brush at Hobby Lobby a while ago, and it has definitely changed my opinion of Mod Podge. Um, let me know down in the comments if you've been around long enough to know that I have <laughs> stated that I've broken up with Mod Podge, but it's back on. I like this brush. If I can find one on Amazon, I will link it down below. So I suggest using Mod Podge for this just because you want this to really hold up. And I did three separate ones because I will be giving one away. But if you want to make one and just use two of the printables on one of the rounds, you could totally do that. That's what I love about these pieces. And you can find these rounds year round, if I can say round any more times, at the Dollar Tree in the crafter square section and I just love how these turned out. Up, we're going to make this beautiful larger ornament, but this can also be year round decor. So I'm going to use one of these decor pieces from Dollar Tree with the wood beads on it. Super easy. I'm just going to take my printable that says it's not about the presence, it's about his presence. I love this saying. I have used this before in Christmas decor um, in previous years. So I love this image and I just, I'm definitely going to keep this out year round in my home. So again, I suggest using cardstock. This project really could not get any easier. I do suggest using some type of Mod Podge glue stick, um, spray adhesive, just to make sure that this stays on. And that is it. You just put it on the backing, put it back in. Super easy and just a beautiful reminder for the Christmas season. Now 
next ornament is perfect for my fellow coffee lovers. And let me know down in the comments if you like coffee as much as me. So for this, I'm going to use one of these coffee signs. It's from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use this really pretty kind of vibrant gift wrap or gift box scrap of paper from Hobby Lobby. So we're going to take off that little clip. I think it's meant to be like a small um, picture frame as I move my camera about. And I'm just going to sand down where that little clip was. You've seen me do this a million times. Oh, take off that backing. Yes. Um, I'm just going to trace, cut, and apply the scrapbook paper. Um, I also want to say, if I sound a little more nasally, I apologize. I kind of already have a nasally voice, but I am sick, so I'm at the end of it. But if I sound nasally, I feel better than I sound pretty much. Um, so we're going to add this scrapbook paper. And then I did make this Starbucks printable. Um, a funny story. I kind of like Starbucks, but like not. It's kind of like a love hate. Um, there's a local coffee shop close to where I live that my family is obsessed with. I go there and I am a Dunkin' girl. But then again, I like coffee all the time. So I'll, I'll just drink coffee wherever. Rambling. But I glued that on with a glue stick and that is it for this. Now I did do my usual hot glue and a craft stick to hang this. I did cut the craft stick in half because you don't want it poking out. And you're going to see me do this for multiple ornaments, but I love this. I feel like the scrapbook paper is very reminiscent of like the annual Starbucks holiday cups. So let me know what you think. up we're going to use one of those large pieces of wood again from the crafter square section and we're going to make a chalkboard menu board so again using one of these larger pieces and this printable which is in the description box below i'm going to first go ahead and trim this with my paper trimmer and i did print all of these out on cardstock i just used a medium weight cardstock um, i get mine from hobby lobby but any cardstock will do. I definitely recommend printing these out on that. They just hold up much better and I feel like they just look more crisp on a cardstock. I have that cut. I am just going to kind of lay it where I'm in, I want it and I'm going to bring it down a little bit because I am going to add a ribbon and then make a mark with my pencil. Then using, <laughs> wow, I really... <laughs> hit that paint out of the um, bottle. Um, using some of the chalkboard paint from the Dollar Tree, which I'm really impressed with this, it works up really well and I only have to use like one good coat oftentimes. Um, I'm just gonna paint the bottom section of this and then let it dry before we go ahead and add our printable. If you are not new to my channel, then you probably already know I love making menu boards and chalkboards. I just apparently want everyone to know what's for dinner. So um, you can also just do this for a year round piece of decor. But since this is a Christmas video, I thought this would be cute for a Christmas menu. Then taking this black and white buffalo check ribbon, I just thought this added a nice pop. We're going to hot glue that right above that chalkboard paint line and then take some Mod Podge and add the printable. So since this is a Christmas menu project, let me know down in the comments what are some things that you serve at your home or you have with your family or friends um, during the holidays. For me, I am Puerto Rican and Italian, so we always do a mixture of both of those cuisines and it's just like the best comfort food and we always have lots and lots of food. So I thought this would be a great gift or just a great piece to have out on your dining room table or buffet to show everyone what is on the Christmas menu. Love nativity decor for Christmas. So when I found this really simple modern nativity, I knew I wanted to recreate it on a budget. So I was excited when I found this nativity wood set at Dollar General for $3. It's a great size. It has everything you need to recreate this nativity scene. Now it's pretty unfinished and it also comes with these kind of slider bases, but I decided to spray paint the actual nativity scene in that matte Rust-Oleum black, similar to the Kirkland's one, and then leave that base 
just the regular wood. Now I did decide to go in with some white chalk paint just to dry brush a bit to add a little bit of depth and dimension. So the reason for this is that although the Kirkland's piece is all black, there's more space to kind of fan everything out in the nativity. Whereas the piece that I'm using from Dollar General makes you kind of slide everything close together. So I felt like adding some dry brushing is going to make each part of the nativity pop. So just keep that in mind if you're doing it on a smaller scale like I am and everything's going to be close together. Having a piece that is dry brush is going to show that more. Now I will say as you see me in real time struggling with this. It was a struggle <laughs> putting it into this Dollar General base. It just was not lining up right. Some pieces went in easy, some didn't. So maybe looking back or honestly, I could take this apart and just adhere it with some hot glue and maybe some stability craft sticks in the back. Um, I did just want to use it the way that Dollar General's craft kit intended, but just being fully transparent, it was a little bit of a pain. However, I love how it turned out. It was considerably cheaper than the Kirkland's version. This only cost me $3 since I had the paint already on hand and I love, love, love how this turned out. Our next project is a really simple vase, vase, tomato, tomato, however you call it. This is just a black vase vase with some greenery. I found this beautiful glass piece from Dollar Tree. Spray painted it again with the spray paint of this uh, video, the Rust-Oleum. And I also was spray painting just all the projects for this video on this particular day. Take your time with the spray paint. I went back for two coats just so I saw no drips, but I love projects like this because it's a modern take on seasonal decor, but this is also a piece that you can just transition to year round. I added some Walmart and Dollar Tree florals and I love how this turned out. Again, so simple and definitely a piece that I can bring throughout the year in my home. So Kirkland's has a variety of wood and metal and just different, more modern trees. So I like these kind of three-dimensional trees that the Kirkland's website had. And I was excited when I was at Dollar General to find these wood trees. You come, They come with three and they have that dimension for only a dollar. So you have a small, a medium, and a large. So lots of different options for these. You can paint them, you can spray paint them, you can stain them. I decided to go with that matte, just very blush pink color. Um, my girls love pink Christmas trees, so I made this with them in mind, but of course you can do this with whatever you want. Now, if you are gonna spray paint or just paint these in general, I do recommend doing the front and the back. Since these are supposed to be like a 3D tree, um, it's just gonna look kind of unfinished if you do one half and then not the other. So I spray painted these. I made sure that the one coat was fully dry before going to the other. I just slid these into each other. They took like two seconds to do and I love how these turned out. And I paired them with this macrame tree that I made not too long ago. And incorporating macrame into my videos. I was so inspired by this trio of macrame Christmas trees that I wanted to do a really easy beginner friendly version for you all. So taking this Christmas tree wood cut out from Dollar Tree, we're going to use this as our base that we're going to add macrame onto. So taking my favorite macrame cord, I get this from Amazon. I will have it linked down below. I went ahead and cut a piece that was long enough to put on the bottom as well as wrap around because that is where we will hot glue and attach this. And then I just kind of eyeballed a piece long enough that I can fold it in half and add some basic square knots to. So my kind of rule of thumb with cutting macrame cord is always cut like two times the length that you want the finished macrame piece to lay. Um, it's always best to just cut a little bit more than you think because um, if you cut not enough, you're just, you lose a lot of length when you do not. So I cut 10 pieces. If I had to guess, they were pretty probably about 20 to 30, 20 inches maybe. I always eyeball it, but I didn't want it to be too long, but I wanted it long enough to 
hold my square knots. And then to attach them, really easy, I just did a little loop, which is a lark's head knot. Then for the top, I am going to cut a piece that fits and then I'm just going to have a lark's head knot on the top. So I didn't need as long of cord and then we are gonna trim also because we don't want it to cover that bottom section of macrame cord. So again, just looping that on with a basic lark's head knot. I will leave some macrame tutorials down below if you want a more detailed look. We're just gonna loop those 10 pieces on, trim them and set those aside. I just kind of placed everything seeing where I want it. It's time to start with that bottom piece of just what we will be macrame. So I like to tape down strands like this just so that when you're working on it, it doesn't move all over the place and you can start with your knots. Okay, so now starting at the left, I'm gonna take those first two groups of lark heads knots and do a basic square knot. Taking from the right, going over, looping through to make part of the square knot and then making like a little four with that left strand going over the two middle knots, taking the right strand over, back and through, that completes our first square knot. And we're gonna go ahead and do this all throughout grouping the two groups of lark heads knots so we have our square knots throughout. And once you do this across, you will have five square knots going across your first row. And now we are on our last square knot of our first row, making five complete square knots. Now what we're gonna do is take those first two pieces on the left side, and we're gonna connect square knots with a square knot. So taking the right two pieces from that first knot, the left two pieces from the second, we are going to do the same square knot and I will have a detailed tutorial on the square knot below. And now you're gonna do this across for your second row for a total of four times. So the outer two strands on each side are gonna be left out. So for your second row, you will have four completed square knots. And again, for that last and final fourth square knot, you're gonna leave out the end two strands to make sure they're not twisted. I, that's what I just had to do. And then you do a square knot there before moving on to the third row. Okay, now for the third row, we are going to connect all strands. So going with the first four strands on the left, we're gonna do a square knot, and now you're gonna have five square knots going in this third row. So with this, you just wanna make sure that that initial kind of knot just lines up so that the sides aren't kind of drooping. You kind of play with it a little bit to adjust, and again, all strands now are going to be used. So you're gonna have five square knots for this third row.
Now that all the knots are completed, it is time to trim. So I just kind of eyeballed everything initially, made my cuts, and then I did have to go back to make sure that everything was nice and even. Now for the tree itself, I'm going to <laughs> make my camera shake. I'm gonna mix some Waverly Antique Wax, take some white Adirondack chalk paint, and then I'm going to mix these to get kind of like a weathered look. Did also decide to add a light tan acrylic. This is very similar to the warm buff that I usually use from Apple Barrel. This is from, I think, Folk Art. I don't know, I've had this forever. Yes, it is Folk Art. So I'm gonna mix all those together. This is gonna kind of give us that kind of gray washed, weathered look that I'm going for. And then I'm gonna show you how I go back in with the antique wax just to give it a little bit of dimension and kind of give it a faux stained look. I'm all about getting the stained look without the smell. I don't mind using stain, but it really just bothers my nose. So when I don't have to use it, I try to improvise. So you're gonna paint this kind of muddy, weathered look all throughout the tree, or you can paint this a different color if you'd like. And then once I have that all on, I'm gonna show you how I go in with the antique wax just so it has a little bit more of a streaky kind of stained look. So for this, I'm just using a sponge brush. And as you can see, I do this when the paint is wet. That's what gives it that kind of, um, I don't know, schmear or kind of like um, smudgy look. That's what you want to do. You could totally do this when the paint is dry. I just find it gives it more of that stained effect. When you do this immediately after you mix that those three colors together, you just go over top and it gives it that look. Now I will say this does take a little while to dry. Um, I think just layering in the antique wax is a little bit thick, so it does take a while to dry. So you want to make sure it's completely dry before hot gluing and attaching the macrame because it will obviously stain it. So I always add some hot glue to the back of the um, strand and then I go back at the end and then flip it over, add some hot glue to either side just to secure. So you can leave this as is, but I use one of these little wood laser cutout stars from Dollar Tree in the top. I just felt like it needed something. And then I'm using these little wood candle holders from Hobby Lobby. This is gonna act as a stand for our Christmas tree. And then to make this stand up, I'm gonna use one of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna hot glue that so it stands up on those little candle pieces and then it lays with the Christmas tree. And then this is like a little trinket box type deal from Dollar Tree and this is going to act as the stand for our tree and that is it. I love this. I feel like it has that world market look, kind of a modern boho vibe, but just such a fun beginner friendly macrame project. I did use a brush and kind of fray the ends of the cord, but let me know what you think about this. I also have some other macrame Christmas projects in mind. So if you wanna see those, give this video a thumbs up or let me know down in the comments, but this was really easy and I love how it turned out. So we're gonna turn the foam board into a large and functional Christmas card holder. So to start, you're just gonna have to pick any wrapping paper. I picked this one up at Walmart. Dollar Tree is a ton of wrapping paper. You can even use something in your stash, but any wrapping paper will do, and then you're just gonna go ahead and wrap it. Make sure that as you are wrapping this, that you kind of keep pulling on the other side to make sure that it's nice and tight on the foam board. And then you just wanna use enough tape so that everything is sticking to the foam board.
Now there was a little bit sticking out in the end, so you do wanna make sure that you tape that so that when you go to display this, it lays nice and even. Now let me know in the comments if you do the same thing. I always have a ton of wrapping paper at my house because I love to buy it right after Christmas. I get it for like a fraction of the cost, so that is a little tip if you don't do that already. Get your wrapping paper for next year at the end of this year because you'll save a ton of money. So this is the ribbon that I am using. Again, Dollar Tree also sells some ribbon, but you're just going to take whatever ribbon of choice that you have and you're going to cut three pieces. You want this long enough so that it covers the front of the foam board and then you can fold it over to secure on the back for all three pieces. So once I have my first cut, I'm going to use that as a little Little measurement marker and then go ahead and cut the other three pieces now I did pick up this ribbon at Walmart and it is a little bit more obviously than the Dollar Tree however you do get a lot more for the money and it's really good quality so don't discount Walmart they definitely have some great Christmas wrapping paper as well as ribbon Now that our ribbon is cut, it is time to hot glue. So I'm gonna start with that center piece and I am going to hot glue the back and then I wanted to reinforce it with some craft sticks just to make sure that when we are actually applying our Christmas cards to this foam board piece, that the ribbon stays in place. So a little bit of hot glue first on the ribbon and then some craft sticks to secure. So like I said, I started with that middle piece giving it a little bit of wiggle room so that you can add some clips for our Christmas cards. And then you're gonna repeat the same thing for either side. I found that it was easier starting with the middle piece so it's nice and center, and then you know where to put the other two side pieces. And this is what we have so far. I love how large this is. Lots of room for Christmas cards. Now to add a little something extra, I did pick up two of these decorative Christmas picks from Dollar Tree. And I went ahead and removed the two large bells in the back. That way when I kind of cross these together, it lay nice and even. So I removed those bells, saving them for another project. And now we're gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the center of these just so that they adhere before we hot glue them to our foam board. Now taking that ribbon, I'm just going to fold it over a few times, cut it, and then make a little makeshift bow. If you are not new to my channel, then you know that the bow struggle is real for me. Um, I really need to practice, but I'm just going to kind of fluff this, secure it with a piece of macrame cord in the middle, and then that is going to be the focal point of our little greenery on the top. Now, of course, you can always buy a pre-made bow. I didn't have any bows that match the ribbon that I used, so that's why I went ahead and made this one. And once it was fluffed to the way that I wanted, I just went ahead and secured it with some hot glue. Dollar Tree does sell these little wood clips. They have a larger size, which I'm using, and they also have a smaller size in their crafter square section. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a whole bunch to this because this is what we will secure our Christmas cards with. I love displaying Christmas cards when I get them each year. So I thought that this was a great way that you can fit a lot of cards on here and like I said I got this idea from Pinterest and I will link the original um, inspiration that I got for this in the description box below so I made some Christmas card printables um, I will link these also down below if you want to print these out yourself 
um, since obviously I've not gotten any Christmas cards yet, but that is it for this project. I love how large it is. It was so easy to make, and this is definitely something I will be using each year in my home to display Christmas cards. So let me know down in the comments how you display usually Christmas cards in your home if you plan on recreating this. So this was the before of the foam board and then this is the finished project. I absolutely love this. Let me know what you think. on this really easy lantern from Kirkland's. Now theirs is a little bit more involved. I'm gonna do a really simple version of this using some wood picture frames. You're gonna need four for this. Now this came from Hobby Lobby. You get a 10 pack for $9.99. I got this 50% off, but Dollar Tree does have comparable wood frames, but it actually is a little bit cheaper to get the 10 with the 50% off at Hobby Lobby. So I did spray paint them again in that black. And then I also used some of the wood snowflakes from Dollar Tree and spray paint painted those as black, those black as well. There we go. So you need four snowflakes and then four of the wood pieces. You can also use picture frames, but I liked the look and shape of the wood. So that is what I went with. So once everything was spray painted on both sides, we we're first going to hot glue those snowflakes on to our lantern pieces. And then once all those snowflakes are on, we are going to construct our lantern. Now, like I said, this is inspired. I did not do an exact replica, but honestly, I like that just seeing something I like and just making my own version of it. So once I had everything together, I'm going to show you how I style this to kind of be an easy like open lantern. Um, this is great if you don't feel like adding a top to it or if you don't have something that fits the top. This is a great quick alternative. So once all four sides are hot glued, to style this, I used this really cute buffalo check plate from Dollar Tree. Oh, and I did go back and use my paint pen just to any of the edges that were not black, just so that they looked more finished. So I was ahead of myself. But now I'm going to show you that buffalo check plate. Some of these LED um, little tea light candles. These came from Hobby Lobby, but Dollar Tree has ones very similar. And I put three on the plate inside the lantern and you have a really cute decorative piece. You can also, since there's not a top on this, put an actual candle in with the flame and you can light that as well. But this is a really quick and easy version of the Kirkland's piece. Projects so today I will be using one of these tag signs from Dollar Tree. So first up, we're gonna make this really really cute Christmas village house that has a chalkboard on the side. So starting with this tag sign, they always have these year round with like different seasonal things. Any tag sign will do. We are going to use the back as the front for this simply because I don't feel like sanding all of the glitter. So that top portion we are going to tape off. Now I ran out of all my painter's tape. Um, so I'm just gonna use some of this um, peel and stick wallpaper scrap that I had left over from Dollar Tree. Um, preferably painter's tape would be what you wanna use, but this is a little hack in case you don't have it. I just wanna have a really nice clean edge since this is going to be the roof and the top of our Christmas village house. For some reason, every time I see these tag signs, I always think, of a roof and like a little village house. So I'm gonna go for it and yeah, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So taking some Waverly ink chalk paint, I'm gonna give this two coats on the top for our black roof. Now one coat would be fine, but I really wanted this to be nice and opaque. So that is why I went ahead and did two coats. It's really important to make sure that the paint is dry before peeling away the painter's tape, or in my case, this peel and stick wallpaper, so none of the paint 
smears. Now, you have a lot of different options to paint the actual little Christmas village house, but I decided to use this shiplap scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. Um, I wanted this to be like a very crisp black and white house with a red door type deal. So that is why I did that. But of course, if you want to paint this or make this a more vibrant color, you can go ahead and do so. So I am going to just measure enough for the part of the sign that is not painted to be covered in the shiplap scrapbook paper. Now with these signs, I find that they don't lay perfectly flat. So you do want to keep that in mind when you are tracing and make sure that you press down so that you get an even line. So when you cut, everything is covered. I always like to use a paper trimmer when making cuts, especially for something like this, just because I cannot cut in a line properly. So this definitely eliminates that problem. Decided to use Mod Podge for this. You can also use spray adhesive, um, but sometimes I don't like using it because it has a very strong odor. So before I go ahead and add the scrapbook paper, I'm really gonna take my time and smooth out the Mod Podge and let it get a little bit tacky before adding the scrapbook paper. You know that I have struggled with Mod Podge for a long time, but I find if I take my time, I smooth it out and give it a little bit of time to kind of dry up and get tacky, it really does eliminate the amount of bubbles that I get. So I'm gonna smooth this out before we start working on the rest of this house. And like I said, I cannot wait for you guys to see the finished product. This came out so, so good, if I do say so myself. Tree has these adorable red door ornaments every year. So this is going to be the front door to this little village house. And I'm just going to place it here so I can get a feel for where I'm going to put the windows. Now for the windows, I'm actually using some wood dollhouse windows that are from Hobby Lobby in their dollhouse crafting section. They're really inexpensive. I'm going to see if I can link some comparable ones from Amazon. Now I did need to make a cut to the top window since this was too big. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and just sand the rest of that window down before adding the other two windows. Now, of course, you can always make your own little faux window with maybe some Dollar Tree craft sticks. But like I said, these windows are not a lot of money and they're super cute and they work perfect for a project like this. I'm just going to make sure that that window is the way that I want it. And then I decided to use these larger dollhouse windows for the bottom on either side of the red door. I feel like they just add a really nice touch. So once I have everything the way that I want it, it is time to paint. While the windows are drying, we're gonna go back to the base of the house. And once that Mod Podge is completely set, I'm gonna take my Dollar Tree sanding sponge and just sand and smooth over all of the edges of the house so that you see no scrapbook paper poking out and it just gives it more of a finished, seamless look. I this to have a chalkboard so you can use it as either a menu or a Christmas countdown. So I was really excited to find this chalkboard sticker from Dollar Tree. You can also use chalkboard paint instead. And I'm going to add it to this Dollar Tree sign, which I love as is. I just want to make the center of it a chalkboard. So I thought this would be perfect for a Christmas countdown sign and a decorative piece, which I'm going to use it for. So I'm just going to kind of feel where I need to cut and then I'll make those cuts and add this sticker.
me know down in the comments if you have found this chalkboard sticker paper from Dollar Tree. It comes in a two pack with their regular stickers in the crafter square section and I am obsessed with it. It's also great for using with um, a Cricut, but you can just use it like I am. Use a paper cutter or some scissors and you have a really quick and easy no painting chalkboard and you do have time to reposition it and it doesn't mess up the sticker so you have everything lined up the way you need it. Making one of these garland twist ties from Hobby Lobby. Dollar Tree has these also, but I've said it before, I think the Hobby Lobby ones are just a little bit better quality. I'm gonna twist this into a wreath, and we're gonna have a wreath on the chalkboard as well as the front door. Now the front door ornament from Dollar Tree does come with the wreath, but I just wanted the wreaths to look cohesive, and I kinda wasn't feeling this one. Um, I don't know, it just was a little janky. Usually they're not like that. I don't know, maybe I just picked up one that was. So once I have those wreaths set, I'm going to attach them with some hot glue and add some bows. For this super fun part, we are going to glue everything together. So we are going to first start out with the door, making sure that's nice and centered before we hot glue the windows. Now I did decide to bring the windows up just a little bit so that they, um, you can see a little more of the house on the bottom. And then I just use a little bit of hot glue for that. You don't want to use too much since it will show through. a base to put the house and the little chalkboard together so I'm taking this long sign from Dollar Tree I'm gonna rip the little hanger off and then I'm gonna give it a quick coat of some white chalk paint it doesn't need to be perfect you just want to cover up the MDF board and I did go ahead and add paint also to the sides and the front so you see none of the F MDF board there we go so I'm gonna use some of this faux glittery snow just a warning it is a mess, but it definitely looks super cute. So making sure that paint is dry, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and use my blow dryer. We are gonna add some Mod Podge onto this so that our faux snow has something to stick to. So you wanna go ahead and cover everything with Mod Podge. Again, let it get a little bit tacky before adding the snow. Now, the snow will not set right away, um, so just keep that in mind. This does require some drying time. So what I first did was just kind of sprinkle, it's like I'm salting something, um, I'm just sprinkling on this. Now, you can use like the snow sheets if you want. Um, they didn't have that in my Dollar Tree, and honestly, I kind of prefer the subtleness of this instead. So I just pressed the snow in when the Mod Podge got tacky. And then once I pressed, I kind of like shook the sign out and then see where I needed to add more and just did this until most of it was covered with the faux snow. that dry a little bit we're gonna go back to the house I decided to make a wreath on the very top it's gonna cover up that hole where the hanger was at the sign but I also feel like it just adds a nice touch again totally optional but I just decided to do that and I did go back and add some small wreaths as well to the two windows on either side of the door but I just love these garland twist ties they make making little wreaths like this super easy so using this pom-pom garland from or trim from Dollar Tree, I'm going to cut a piece for the chalkboard, which is kind of going to be like another elevation of our little Christmas village house. And I'm also going to add some to the house itself. I feel like this also just kind of gives the effect of snow and just gives it more of a Christmassy look. I also picked this up in green. I just think this is one of the cutest things that Dollar Tree has this year for Christmas crafting. And I did reuse the bow from the Dollar Tree door ornament, the little buffalo check to add a bow to this wreath.
Like I said, I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue and then just add this trim also, giving the effect of either Christmas lights or some snow. It would be fun to use um, one of the brighter color ones, but again, I wanted to keep this really just very like white, black, and red. So once that is set, it is time to put this together. So once the snow is set, like I said, you're going to add some hot glue to the bottom of the chalkboard, which is basically going to act like another elevation to our Christmas Village house. Um, so that's going to go on the right side. And then we are going to hot glue the house. Now to do that, I decided to use two of these Crafter Square wood cubes. And I first put the house up where I was going to put it. And then I just kind of played with where I need to glue those cubes. So once I figured that out, I added some glue to the bottom. And then you are going to add glue also to the fronts of these. And that is going to give this house the ability to have some stability to stand up. So a little bit of hot glue, like I said, in the fronts of those cubes. And then we're going to press the house on top of that. Now you want this to also overlap a little bit of the chalkboard and then you're going to add a little bit of hot glue at the top there and just kind of pinch both pieces together. Now I thought it would be fun to add a little bit of curb appeal to this. So taking this adorable red sleigh ornament from Dollar Tree, they also had a galvanized, but I thought the red again was just a nice pop. We're going to add that to the right side and then add one of these bottle brush trees also from Dollar Tree on the left. Now we're also going to add a little bit of hot glue to that sled and you're going to see that this actually works out perfect to hold some chalk for the chalkboard that it's next to. So again I think this adds a nice just really festive pop and once you have that all together, it is time for the reveal of this adorable village house. So many things you can do with this. You can even add some of the Dollar Tree like twinkling lights, some of these small village accessories. But this is a great option for just a festive chalkboard to either count down Christmas, have a little... Um, Bible verse or Christmas saying or menu, lots of different options for this, but I was so excited with how this turned out. Let me know what you think about it. Pack is going to be this gingerbread house and we're going to make this into a functional decorative piece that can hold stockings. And using the same tag sign, we're going to flip this over. And the great part about this being like an MDF board sign is that you don't have to paint it. It kind of already looks like the color the gingerbread is. So I'm going to be using to start this pom-pom trim again from Dollar Tree. And I am just going to add it to give the effect and dimension that you would see with a gingerbread house. Now we're also going to go in with some color um, glue, but I wanted to start with this just to give it a little bit of dimension. And honestly, it's just a great hack for a gingerbread house without having to add all the extra glue like we're going to. Now this door that we hot glued on is the same red door ornament used in our Christmas village house, but instead I painted this white to kind of blend in. And then I did add some trim on top of that as well. And then added trim on either side of the door. Okay, so once all that trim is added, we're going to use some of the Dollar Tree command hooks. Don't worry, I cut off that bottom arrow piece. Now, they do have adhesive, but I did add some hot glue as well just to really make sure that they stay. And then whatever command hooks you use, you want to make sure that they will hold enough weight that you are going to obviously put on them. So to start, I just used a white chalk pen. Um, obviously, it dries very light. 
I just wanted to kind of trace where I'm going to put the glue and I wanted it to have a white base so that if any showed underneath the glue, it blended in. And then I just went on Pinterest and I kind of just searched some gingerbread house ideas like for the design. So I kind of went from there and then just drew some designs that looked similar, kind of a blend of what I saw so that I can then go ahead and have a template to add the glue to. Okay, so I'm gonna link down below the glue sticks that I use, but I used my cordless mini Sherbonder glue gun, and then I used the color glue sticks in white, of course. And a little tip with doing this, when you add this, you wanna wait like a second or two before lifting your glue gun. That's just gonna help let it set a little bit and eliminate all of the little stringy pieces of glue that you'll get. So this took some time, not gonna lie, but I do think it looks super cute. And then I did go back and add a little bit more in certain spots just to give it more of the illusion of icing. So I took a little bit of break from the um, faux icing to let my cordless glue gun recharge a little bit. And then I felt like this door needed something. So I made another little makeshift wreath with the wired garland. And then I twisted some of this pom-pom trim on the garland. And I felt like it just gave it a nice kind of fun, snowy, festive touch. So I'm gonna attach that with some hot glue before adding some faux icing trim to the rest of our faux gingerbread house. So let me know down in the comments, what are some ideas you have for these tag signs? Like I said, for some reason, I just think like village houses for Christmas. So that is why I went with this theme. And I think these are two really fun, decorative, and yet still functional options for Christmas crafting, which I always think is fun to do. So I felt like this was just missing something. So I'm gonna go ahead and faux ice the border of this just to kind of complete it. And again, I think it's so great that the MDF board already has the color of gingerbread, so it eliminates the extra painting you have to do. Once that is all done, this is what our faux gingerbread house looks like. I think it turned out super cute. Now, like I said, you can hang stockings from this. Of course, just keep in mind the weight when it comes to this. And you can also hang it on the wall with some command strips to just really make sure that it's stable. Um, another great option for this is you can also add um, like a hand towel on here and make it something like in a kitchen Christmas decor. So let me know what you would hang on this. Would it be like dish towels or stockings? Let me know. But I think this turned out really cute and I love the gingerbread vibe to it. These so, tray wood pieces from Dollar Tree as well as some printables that will be in the description box below. So what I did was I took these outside since it was actually a decent day and I went ahead and spray painted these with some white Rust-Oleum spray paint. Lots of options for these. Um, I just felt like since they had the little slots and the grooves, spray painting them would be easy. I did have to go back and do two coats just to make sure that everything was covered. And yes, I got spray paint all over my driveway. <laughs> so this is what the three trays look like with the spray paint. And then what I'm gonna do is put these horizontally and I am going to hot glue them. But before I do that, I'm gonna take one of the Dollar Tree seasonal signs. Now this is from 
Valentine's Day leftover. And I'm just gonna mark where I need to make a cut. But Dollar Tree, as I'm gonna show you in a second, always has a lot of different long seasonal signs. So any sign like that will do. I went on the Dollar Tree website and this is an example of a comparable sign you can use that's out now possibly in your Dollar Tree. Or you can use one of these big wood hanging pieces from the crafter square section. So I made that cut and then I went ahead and took some hot glue and then I hot glued all three pieces and this is going to be kind of the base of our advent. Now let me know down in the comments, do you like advent calendars or do you do more of like a Christmas countdown? This is going to be more of a countdown but like in an advent form. I kind of like the countdowns better but let me know what you prefer in the description, not description box, good lord the comments down below. So this is a little sneak peek of what we're going to be making. So as you see, we have this beautiful Christmas village on top with the church as the centerpiece. So for this, I'm using one of these house kind of shelf pieces from Dollar Tree. Now I did use this in a recent project, which I will have linked down below. And I made this into kind of a decorative mug stand. And these house pieces are so pretty. If you can find them at your Dollar Tree, definitely snag them because they are so versatile. And this is gonna be the focal point or the base for our church. So I made this printable again, it is in the description box below. And I went ahead and measured everything to fit this Dollar Tree sign. So all I need to do is just trace and cut and apply this. Now I did print this out on cardstock. I find that printing out pieces that you're going to adhere to a sign on cardstock just eliminate the bubbles and they kind of hold up a little better. So since I did rip the ledge off this sign, I did go ahead and kind of sand down the bumps that were made. I first put this sign on the top of the printable just to make sure that it will line up when I go ahead and trace it. And then that is what I'm going to do now, just trace and cut this to fit our house sign. And then once I made sure that it fit, I just went ahead and took some Mod Podge. I know, shocker, me and Mod Podge are back on. Um, you can use that spray adhesive. You could use a glue stick, but I feel like you would have to use a decent amount of the glue to make sure that the cardstock holds on. But whatever your adhesive preference is, use that. I did make sure that I painted the Mod Podge on nice and thin, let it get a little bit tacky before adding the printable. Now you can leave this as is, but I felt like it was missing something. So I took two crafting popsicle sticks and I went ahead and made this act kind of as a roof just to give a little bit of a pop and dimension. Taking some brown acrylic paint and painting this, I kind of made it look almost like a stain. So I didn't do a super opaque coat, but of course that is personal preference. Once that little roof is hot glued to our church, we are now going to add the other houses in this kind of village scene. So these are two printables, like I said, that will be in the description box below. And if you ever have issues downloading my printables, you can always email me. It may take me a day or two to get back to you, but I will always send you those PDF files directly. So I went ahead and just made sure I took my time, cut all around the two village houses. And I laid them on either side of our long sign from Dollar Tree just to kind of get an idea of where I needed to hot glue and center our church since this is the focal piece of this piece. 
And then I used some hot glue for that and just a glue stick for the village houses. Okay, so this is what the top of our Christmas countdown looks like so far. And then I will eventually be showing you how I add this on top of those boxes that we first hot glued. But before we do that, I wanted to go ahead and add the numbers or the countdown to this piece. So for this, I'm using some fastener dots from the crafter square section of Dollar Tree. Now I first just went ahead and laid them out so that I can make sure everything fits. As you notice, since we're only using three of these trays, I put two numbers per box, but this is a great way also to save money instead of buying a ton of these trays to fit all 24 or 25 days, however you do your countdown. Um, also, if you can't find a whole bunch, it's great that you can do this with just three. Now you can also do this with Dollar Tree signs. You just wanna make sure it kind of has a backing that goes out so you have kind of a little ledge. And I added the fastener dots just so that letters, or not the letters, oh my goodness, <laughs> it's late, I'm tired. Um, the numbers pop. You could totally glue these. I just thought it looked a little bit better having that kind of come up. And once those numbers are on, we are going to attach this main piece on the top. Now I did add a little piece of Crafter Square scrap wood just to add a little bit more stability to the piece. And then I went in with a whole bunch of the Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks just to make sure that everything stays in place. Now I did use a number 25 for the day of Christmas. I'm keeping that in the back for now and then I'll just add that to the church doors on the day of Christmas. But this is how it turned out. You'll see that I used one of the wood stickers from Dollar Tree to kind of act as our moving piece for each of the days. Now I'm doing this more as like a, it's December 1st, it's December 2nd. I know people do, Advent calendars and Christmas countdowns a little bit different. So the way that we do it is just like, it's December 1st today, it's December 2nd. I don't know, that's just how we do it. Let me know in the comments how you do it. But either way, you could definitely customize this to fit how your family does it. And I think this is a really fun project to make to count down the days until Christmas. Now I found this adorable little like metal Christmas tree mini stand, not stand, what are they called? Collar. And I'm going to use one of the Dollar Tree white plates, place that on top, no glue, no paint. This is like a instant project. How cute is this? They also had a galvanized version and this is just such a steal and a good find to find at the Dollar Tree this year. We're going to make this really, really easy little tear tray sign. I did a printable with pumpkin pie. It was the recipe from the back of a pumpkin pie can. And I found a sugar cookie recipe that I'm gonna use this year. I found that on Pinterest. And then I just went ahead and made the printable and then I put it on sticker paper. Again, quick and easy and no glue, no Mod Podge. And it's as simple as adding the printable, whether you use sticker paper or you use some Mod Podge to adhere it to the backing of the frame. And that is it. These Dollar Tree frames with the wood beads are one of my absolute favorite finds. I did decide to add this little bow. I think it looks cute, but hindsight is 2020 and it kind of covers the writing a bit. Um, I know someone's going to call me out for that, but I wanted it to look festive, so I'm totally cool with it. But if you don't want the writing to be covered, you can either just not put the bow or maybe trim the bow back but I don't mind it. I think this is super cute and a great piece for a tear tray, a coffee bar, a kitchen, and just a really quick and easy project. That is what I was going for with this video. Just quick, simple, easy Christmas crafts. 
little tear tray sign is this Christmas story inspired piece. I did something with a little cutout for banks in my Hocus Pocus videos, which I will have linked down below. So I found one similar. This is always by the registers at all my Dollar Trees. Wow, the camera really <laughs> shook there. <laughs> Apparently I am sanding the glitter down with authority, but sand that down. And then originally I was going to paint this and I should have just spray painted with that really pretty Rust-Oleum paint. I was just not liking the way that the acrylic paint was on this. I don't know why, if it was like the finish of it, but I did like four or five coats and it just, mm, it wasn't doing it for me. So I'm showing you the option of painting, but instead what I decided to do was use some scrapbook paper, some good old Buffalo check scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. Another option would be using that plaid buffalo check type situation placemat that I used before. So that's another option. You've seen me do this a whole bunch of times, awkward angle of my hair <laughs> in the way. You're just going to trim, cut, and then however you decide to apply, whether it's some Mod Podge, glue stick, what have you, you're just going to add that on. And let me know down in the comments what one of your favorite Christmas movies is. To me, it's a Christmas story. Um, it's just a classic. I watch it every year since I was little and I had to do something when I saw the glasses cut out um, of the part where Ralphie <laughs> almost shoots his eye out. So I made this little printable. That will be down in the description box below. And I think this is really, really cute. Next DIY is a really fun kind of interactive ornament. I shared these fall bucket list leaves and then I also made little pumpkin cutouts with Halloween movie options. So I wanted to do something similar for Christmas. I found in the crafter square section this really cute mini crate. This is definitely new. I have not seen this and I thought it would be cute to make a little ornament and I made a printable, I laminated the little cards. I would have used the Christmas tree cutouts had my Dollar Tree gotten them, but they haven't and that's fine. I provided a printable, with some of my favorite Christmas movies, and then I used a little Dollar Tree sticker. I have movies on it, and then I am gonna add a bow, add these in, and I think this is really fun to put on the Christmas tree, and then when you have a family movie night or you're in the mood to just watch a movie, you have all options here. I love making things like this that are not only decorative, but kind of add a little fun into the season, so let me know what you think. love a good wreath insert. So that is what we're going to make. I made a few of them. This is one of my favorite ones that I made from the fall. So for this wreath insert, we are going to use this heart printable that I made. I printed this out on sticker paper again, just for the ease of it being on sticker paper. And I got a pack for, I think it was like a 20 pack, maybe more. It was $10 originally from Hobby Lobby, half, half off. And then I'm going to use this I almost said Dollar Tree scrapbook paper. It's not. Hobby Lobby scrapbook paper with this Dollar Tree heartwood cutout that they always have in the um, crafter square section. And then I'm just going to layer this. I thought this music note looked really nice with kind of the rustic feel of the printable that I made. So I'm just going to trim that and attach both of them. Paired this with this really pretty flocked wreath that I use every year from Walmart. It was such a good deal. It's beautiful. It looks very high end and I think the wreath insert sign really just blends nice with it. Which you guys seem to like and I wanted to use them again to make this really cute picture frame vase. So for this project, you're just going to need four of the same size um, picture frames from Dollar Tree any ones will do. I just really like these with the little piece on the bottom. And then you're just gonna wanna take off the little stand on them since we will be hot gluing these and making these into a vase. Now, let me know down below if you have found these red plaid, right, I think it's plaid, yeah. Um, 
placemats from Dollar Tree. I love these. They're perfect for Christmas crafting. So we're going to use these in place of scrapbook paper. You could totally use scrapbook paper if you want. Um, I just took the inner um, backing of one of the picture frames and then I went ahead and traced four so I can make my cuts to add these to our Dollar Tree picture frames. I definitely suggest like not skipping the aisle with the placemats. I know it's kind of a weird crafting item, but sometimes Dollar Tree has really cute ones and they make great replacements for a project that you might use scrapbook paper for or just they're great to have in your craft stash. Random item, but definitely good. So super easy. We're just going to add these back to the picture frames before we construct this vase with some hot glue. And once you have this, you can add your florals. I did not add a bottom to this. It's not needed putting it on a tabletop. And I love how simple this is. And I love how it turned out. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Lots of really easy, fun Christmas decor ideas to craft and decorate your home. Also be sure to check the description box below for any of the printables that I provided. My email is also there in case you need help getting those printables. If you're not subscribed, I definitely invite you to do so and turn on that notification bell so you know every time I upload a new video. I upload on Mondays and Thursdays with bonus videos on Saturdays, so you don't want to miss it. Make sure that notification bell is turned to all. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.